good morning guys or or maybe it's the afternoon where you are perhaps perhaps it's even the evening wherever you are in the world whenever you decided to press that play button uh welcome nice to have you here if it's your first time here uh yeah indeed welcome thanks for popping by and if you uh enjoy the channel then be sure just to hit that subscribe button and the bell don't forget the notifications bell youtube's obsessed with the bell for those of you that have been here a while welcome welcome back today we are going to talk about adjusting and checking the valves of a Volvo Penta D255 diesel engine and uh, this is something that I, I didn't have a clue how to do just a couple of weeks ago. So before I get into this I think there needs to be a little bit of a backstory. So for those of you who've been following along a while you'll know that last year we came unstuck a couple of times when it came to our engine and so this year, this winter, in order to try and mitigate from those things happening again I decided to do a deep dive, fairly extensive service on the engine which also involved replacing and upgrading a few parts and I wanted to try and do most of that by tapping into the hive mind that is social media, the internet, forums, YouTube videos, more YouTube videos uh, and that's kind of the thesis of this channel seems to have turned into can two sort of land lubbery boaty know-nothings make this transition from a regular life to living full-time on a sailboat and get by with the help of social media and for the most part the, the answer is yes although once I was doing all this fairly extensive work to the engine, one of the jobs happened to be, a couple of videos ago, rebuilding the raw water intake pump, and I got stuck. Now, shout out to SV and Pavidus, they did a great job making videos that got me so far, but their water pump was ever so slightly different. And there was a hidden circlip on the one uh, that I was trying to rebuild and I couldn't finish getting it apart. And I couldn't find a video anywhere that solved the, the problem or I couldn't get any results in a forum or that nothing that really kind of made sense to me. So luckily, Itchin Marine has many legends living within it, one of which happens to be a man called Gary, who very kindly took time out of his day and uh, helped me finish, uh, well he helped me finish off taking the pump apart and rebuilding it by finding the circlip for me. Gary and I anyway, after that, had a bit of a conversation and he was inquiring as to what else I was doing to the engine. And I told him all the jobs I'd done, said I got a couple left to do. One of them happens to be changing the rocker cover gasket because I said there seems to be a little bit of oil leaking from around the rim of the rocker cover. Gary then says to me, oh good, that's the perfect time to check your valve clearances and make any adjustments. To which I probably went a bit cross-eyed like, oh yeah, okay, of course, because I, I didn't have a clue what a valve even looked like, let alone how to adjust the clearances. So I went back to the boat, whacked some videos on and tried to sort of get to the bottom of it. However, luckily for me, Gary did say, if you get stuck at all, come give me a knock. And that brings you right up to speed with where we are now, going to give Gary a knock. I need some help with my engine, Gary. Is that my messing thing, man? All right. Hello. There's a big boat coming out. He's telling the little boat to get out of his way. Is there a sailboat in their way? Yeah. I think they're playing chicken. Most sailors don't realise. The, the, the horns are for him. <laughs> oh. Um. Oh my gosh, he's right in the middle. Like, what? I don't know. Oh my gosh. Right across the front. Yeah. What a minute. Wow. Oh my gosh! This is one of those jobs, isn't it? That you said once you know what you're doing, it's easy. Yeah. First of all, lift the washers off the top of the studs, or you'll lose them. Or you lift the rocker cover off, and then they'll fall down into the engine. Even doing it on the rock or on the rule of nine, what it means is your number one valve fully open. Yeah. So all the way like that, and you adjust number eight, eight plus one, nine. Okay. And so we go through the system. Okay. So, so if we have two. number two fully open, you adjust seven. Okay. So down 
is fully open. Yeah. So I feel that what Gary said there probably could do some justice by being fleshed out a bit. When he said the rule of nine, this, I don't know if this works for all different types of engines, but for ours, again, the D255, and our model is an F, uh, I believe this strategy works for any four cylinder, eight valve engine. Again, I could be wrong, I'm no expert, but this is what we did for ours. So for our particular engine, the rule of nine basically means whichever valve opens, whichever number valve opens, you then add the corresponding number to it to get to the number nine and that should be the valve that is closed and needs the uh, the clearance check-in so for example if valve number one opens fully you add eight to the number one to get nine which means valve eight will be checked if valve number two opens then you add seven to two to get nine and so valve number seven will be the one we check the clearance on and you go through that through the whole engine until you've checked the clearance on all the valves. The clearance in the manual on our book, again, I don't know if it's the same for all Volvo Penta D255, so do check your manual, but we needed a clearance of 0.2 millimeters between each of the valves to be correct. They are tight, your valves. They are tight? Yeah. Is that good? No. <laughs> tight can stop it from closing properly. Oh, too tight to close properly? Yeah, and too loose. It rattles like hell. So where exactly are you? Were you putting that gauge to measure what, what space exactly? Were you? I couldn't see all the way at the back there. I didn't know if you. Right. This is the rocker. Yeah. And that ga that gauge goes in between the valve stem and the rocker. Yeah. See how I can turn that. Yeah. In between there. And this is the adjuster nut, and that's a lock nut. Okay. So if we were going to adjust it, what we do is loose, turn that nut a little bit, screwdriver, and adjust it. Okay. And what you should end up with is... Now, if you just pull that, you know, just in and out, you'll feel how. You should just have that little bit of resistance okay and that's that's good is it yeah okay like you're slicing along the there, side there oh, okay so you're actually going in there okay yeah so between that little roller and the rocker okay okay, okay. see it have a look and see it yourself And so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's eight. So we're gonna we're gonna put this between all eight of them by the time we're done, and they're all gonna be 0.2. Yeah. Okay. Look at that. Every day's a school day, huh? <laughs> this is good. You see, I wouldn't. I think. I think everything else. I'm like, yeah, I can muddle through. Or I can. I, I would have. Yeah. I wouldn't have even yeah, had a clue where to put you it. Don't adjust them at the correct point with, with number one valve open, and then adjust number eight. Yeah. If you adjusted it and this one was closed and you adjusted number eight, yeah. the gap would be all wrong. And so and what, what happened? You end up bending a push rod. Okay. And that could just knacker the engine basically. Yeah. Valves right, so there it. we go. We've got eight valves. Okay. Pen. I've just checked number eight. And number eight's okay. good. Okay, cool. Now there are a couple of tools that you may need to do this job that might just be outside of your regular toolkit. The first one is a feeler gauge and this is what you're going to use to give you the 0.2mm um, clearance measurement. You can get these in pretty much all auto stores, you can definitely get them on Amazon, I'm sure Jeff Bezos and his team will have it there the next morning. You'll also need a socket big enough to crank the engine, which in our case I believe was a 32mm socket. Other than that you just need some spanners and some regular sockets and a flat headed screwdriver to actually adjust the valve. So after you've removed the rocker cover and you've started cranking the engine, you'll start to see the valves move. At that point, you can start taking measurements from wherever they start and finish until you've worked your way through the entire engine. Does that mean you check number one then? Yeah. Okay. See, you've got it already. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Okay. See, we might go through them or they all might be fine. Yeah. But but since you're here, anyway, you now yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. So you can mark off number one. That's okay. That one's open. Yeah. See it? Okay. So, you, so eight and five are open at the simultaneously. Yeah. Okay. So five and four. Yeah. There's nine. Yeah. And that's fine. Okay. 
so you can mark off number four. And does that does that often happen that two will be open simultaneously? Yeah, yeah. Okay, there's that one. Yeah, so number four is going. And, and number seven. And that one. Okay. So you just keep going slowly till they stop moving. As in opening. Yeah. So like you'll do a turn and they won't move anymore and you'll know that's so about now. That's it. So number seven. Is that a little bit loose with me, others? Yeah. So that one and that one. So that one looks that okay. One, that one's okay. This one's a little bit on the loose side. Okay. So do you have spanners here and a screwdriver? It's like a 10 mil spanner. Setting. and then you turn it to, you tighten the screw a little bit yeah. and it'll take away the excess what? play if you loosen it it'll make it looser okay yeah. and so you just keep slowly turning it until you get that same level of resistance that yeah. you get okay like so the same as the rest of them Super. yeah and you always check it after you've taken the sockets and the screwdriver off just in case it's moved so that's number two can get yeah. ticked off yeah, number seven's okay so you can tick that one off okay perfect number six is okay. I'll take that one off if that had just been left unchecked obviously just with one of the valves a little bit loose, like consequentially, what, what kind of, well, ah, pickles can that get into? What would eventually happen is, because it's uh, moving mechanical parts, the wear, yeah. everything wears because of the friction, although it's got lubrication on it. And as it wears, the gap would get bigger. But then the valve head could wear into the seat. So that gap would get smaller, so that's why you've got to keep checking them. Okay. And when you were feeling for play um, in Just them, to was make that... sure that that was the correct valve I was on. Okay, okay, okay. Because you can feel it. Okay. If it was tight, tight, yeah. you would go, oh. I better recheck that and make sure I'm okay. trying to adjust the correct valve. Okay, just a couple of points I think might be worth clarifying in that video. When we're talking about cranking the engine, we actually put the socket set over this pulley is it a pulley over this nut here on the pulley and with regards to numbering the valves one to eight number one was here at the very front of the engine and the number eight valve was over at the back of the engine here okay i'm going to get to work now editing this video and get it all uh, uploaded for you guys i hope you got something from it i hope there was some useful information in there i certainly learned a lot and on that note, Gary, thank you so much again for not just your help, but your time. You're so incredibly generous with your time on a weekend when I'm sure you'd much rather have been doing stuff to your own boat. As I say, you didn't just help us get the job done. I feel like I learned so much. So genuinely, thank you very much. And if there's anything I can do to repay the favor, let me know, I will happily do it. Uh, if you guys are new here, then be sure to hit the subscribe button. Don't forget the notifications bell. Um, and you'll be the first to know as and when we release a video because there's no set day and time it's not like weekly bi-weekly twice weekly sometimes there'll be two videos a week sometimes there'll be two videos a month it really does vary depending on you know what's going on if i'm working full time it's the middle of winter and i'm doing boat work then the videos probably taper off if it's the middle of summer i'm not working and i'm exploring adventuring with carly and hank and i've got a little bit more time on my hands and i've got so much more interesting things to share then we will share them so the only way you're going to know what's come out and when it's coming out is to as i say hit that notifications bell and if you want to find out more about us check out the website it's uh, kadoa.com i'll pop a link in the description as i say it's more about us where we've come from our history some more pictures some interesting stuff about the boat upgrades we're going to be doing have done and so much more anyway it's been great and we'll speak to you guys soon bye for now